So now that we've got the PAR server code on our own computer, we want to now run PAR server. Now the first way I'm gonna show you how to run it is actually locally on your computer itself. It's actually very, very simple. So if you actually go to the repo, scroll down, you can see it's actually got instructions here for local development, this section here. And I'll just quickly go through this for you. The first thing you need to do is actually make sure you've got Node installed, at least Node 4.3. So the first thing we do is we get the, just copy and paste this command, go into your terminal, paste it in, and I have Node 5 installed on my computer. Now, if you don't have Node at least 4.3 installed, or you just don't have Node installed at all, and this is returning an error, go into the appendix to this course, there's a section on how to install Node. Follow through those instructions and make sure you've got Node installed with the correct version number. And then come back to here. So once you're sure you've got the correct version of Node installed on your computer, we then need to install all of the dependencies that our project needs in order to run. So to do that, we type npm space install. So we just go back into our terminal and that's it, just type npm install. So this might take a while and I'll come back to it when it's finished. Okay, and once it's installed, you should see something like this. So if I scroll up, I just want to say that you might get some warnings printed out on the screen. And that's fine, okay, it's not great, but it's fine, it's just a warning. Only really pay attention to this if it's an error. And if it is an error, then NPM would have exited anyway and given you a more descriptive message. And if you did get one of those errors and it isn't installing correctly, the thing to do is to actually just copy and paste the error or, or some message there into Google and just see what gets returned. If you've tried that and nothing's obvious, you know, go right ahead, ask in the Q&A section to the course, and I myself or perhaps another student will be able to help. But please, if you do get an issue, the first thing to do is just to copy and paste the error message into Google because nine times out of 10, a dozen, 200, 300, 1,000 other people would have received, would have had the same issue as you and the answer is probably gonna be somewhere in the first three results on Google. So please, first thing to do, it'll save everybody a lot of time if you just copied and pasted it into Google. So now everything's installed correctly, so let's go back to the instructions. The next thing we need to do is we need to install MongoDB. Now MongoDB is the database that's used by PARS to persist and store the data. Now they have instructions, so if you just click on the link, it will take you to the MongoDB website. And here it will have instructions for, well, the OS X, the Mac version, if you've got Windows, it's got instructions for the Windows version, and if you're Linux, it's got instructions for the Linux version. So for OS X in particular, because I have OS X, you have two methods of installing. One of them is with the Package Manager Homebrew. If you are already using Homebrew, then you, you'd feel a lot more comfortable using Homebrew to install MongoDB. But if you're not using Homebrew, you can actually install it manually yourself. And this page has instructions for, for both. Whether you're using OS X or Windows or Linux, just follow through the instructions here and just make sure you've got MongoDB set up on your computer. And then the next step is just to run Mongo or type the command Mongo and connect your database just to make sure it's working. So let's go back into our terminal. I'm gonna clear it up. I'm gonna type Mongo. And here we go. This is what it should look like if MongoDB is running on your computer correctly. So we just type Control D to exit. So now let's go back into the instructions. And all we have to do now to unpass server is type the command npm start. So we just type npm start. And there we go. Now it is running pass server on our local machine, which is identified by localhost, and it's running on port. 1337. So let's just go back into our browser and let's just have a look at localhost port 1337 and let's see what it prints out. There we go. 
So if you see this message in your browser, you now know it's working and you've managed to successfully launch Parse Server on your local machine. But running on localhost can actually be a bit of a problem, especially when it comes to testing your application. Because if Parse is running on localhost, then the only things that can connect to it must also be running on localhost. So say for instance, you are doing some app development, you won't be able to access your Parse that's running on localhost from the app that you're testing on your phone, because that phone is a different device, it's not localhost. So what most people do when working with PARS, and what we're going to be doing as well for this course, is we're going to deploy PARS so it's available from a remote URL. And that would mean that it's available from any server or any computer anywhere in the world. That's what you'll have to do eventually once you launch your product, you're gonna to have to put your PARS server code somewhere on the internet. So we might as well do it now at the start. And with Heroku, it's actually very, very simple.